Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. I'm going to give everybody a chance to log in. And we are going to be talking about men's health. And we're also going to be talking about Movember. And the, you know, the background to it and all of this kind of good stuff. Give y'all a chance to get on. As you can see, I have all kind of goodies on the table. Grown folks goodies. Grown men goodies. All kind of stuff. We're going to get deep into this thing today. I'm going to take my time with this because, you know, a lot of times men always say, you're always talking about stuff for the women. You don't never talk about enough stuff for the men. Okay. Well, men, this is your month. So, tag a man, ladies. Get on here and tag a man and tell him to pay attention. Because we're going to learn some good stuff today just for the men. Tag them. Give y'all a chance to tag them. I got three of y'all. Four of y'all. Okay. Y'all starting to get in. All right. All right. Giving y'all a chance to get on. I ain't do y'all too bad. I ain't wear my Alabama shirt today. I, I said I'm going to go ahead and uh, wear my black and gold. Because, you know, the Saints cut up last night. I don't know if y'all watched the game, but it was very intense. And if you into football like I'm into football, you was hooping and hollering and acting a damn fool coming for a quarter. Let's see. Hey, Jalen. How you doing? Jalen. Oh, my God. Yes, I used to teach you. I was your teacher. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. You paying attention, Jalen? <laughs> That's what's up. It's always funny to me when I see all of my students that I used to teach. They all, you know, they were in uh, adult education then, but a lot of them was between the ages of um, 16 and 21. But, like, they grown, grown now. Like, they grown, grown with families and children. So, when they come in the store with their spouses and all of this kind of stuff, I'm just be like, you know what? Miss Parker getting old. That's right. Who that? That's right. That's right. All right. So... I'm going to give y'all a chance to log on and y'all just going to have to play catch up and y'all might have to go back and rewind or whatever. But today we are talking about men's health, okay? And let me tell you why this is so important because women go and we, we get checked on all the time. But I, I meet too many men who not only work jobs but who pay for insurance but never utilize their insurance. They never go get their annual checkups. The only time they go to the doctor is for uh, a basic cold or sinuses or something like that. And a lot of times when things go in, go a lot of times when things go on with men, they find out when it's almost too late because they didn't catch it in the beginning. Okay, so let me start by saying, women, the same way you schedule annual appointments for your children, okay. You should be scheduling annual appointments for your husbands, your boyfriends, fiancés, and all of this kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we want our men healthy because we want them here with us for a long period of time. You know, you want longevity and you don't want somebody to die prematurely because they didn't go and take care of themselves when it comes down to going to get their annual checkups and stuff like that. Far too often. We feel like, you know, well, if he up, working, breathing, moving around, then everything is okay. We, as women, we check for lumps in our breasts. You know, after our cycle, we check for lumps in our breasts. Men are not taught to check to see if they have little lumps or knots in their nutsack. Okay? Ladies, that's where we come in. Okay? Why we down there and we servicing them and we caressing and massaging their balls and we sucking their dick, I need you to be feeling to make sure that he does not have any lumps or knots in his nutsack. Because if he has lumps or knots, that is your indicator that I need to schedule him an appointment because he needs to get this checked because it may be an underlying issue going on, okay? It's extremely important that men stay on top of their health. For example, if prostate cancers and all of this kind of stuff runs in his family, meaning he had a great uncle or a grandfather 
or any male in his family that is dealing with this issue, he is at risk. That means that he has, uh, I'm not, and I, trust me, I don't speak sickness over nobody's life, but what I'm saying is he's at a higher risk for these things to be going on with him in the future. So with that being said, when he goes to his annual appointment, he needs to let his primary care know, hey, this is what runs in my family. Because when they know that it runs in your family, they start checking you for it at an earlier age. Okay? Um, now, another thing is, you know, Movember is all about bringing awareness. Like, men don't shave during the month of November. November. It's called No Shave November. And a lot of times they grow mustaches and so on and so forth. And people say, well, why do men do this? It's to bring awareness to health problems that men have, such as testicular cancer and such as prostate cancer. Those are the two big ones for men, okay? That's why they don't shave for the month of November because they want to have that conversation started and then you can ask, hey, you went and got checked up this year? You need to go and get checked up. But a lot of times men have issues because they like, oh, I don't want to go get checked up because I don't want the doctor to stick nothing in my ass. But you the same man that will let a woman lick your ass. I don't understand it. You will let her lick your ass for pleasure, but you won't let the doctor stick his finger in your ass to make sure that you can live a long life. Y'all going to talk up in here to me. Y'all going to say something back. Because I see that y'all are on here, but y'all not really talking and asking questions. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Good, 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 good. I'm glad y'all are logging on. So, when it comes down to men's health, it's a lot of other things that could go on with men other than they can't get an erection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they can't get an erection, it's other underlying issues going on. So, we got to go get all of that checked out. We got to make sure that they got the circulation coming to their shaft like they're supposed to. And then you have some men that don't mind pleasure in certain areas, and that's where all of this comes in. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about is Yohimbi. Yohimbi drops. People say, Sharonda, what the hell is Yohimbi? I got Yohimbi drops and I have Yohimbi cream. Yohimbi comes from Africa. It comes from a tree in Africa. And what they do is they extract the saliva from the tree and they put it in this little liquid form like this. And what it does is it helps with erectile dysfunction. What you do is you take the Yohimbi drop and you take it, put it in a syringe, and you drop it under your tongue, but you don't swallow. You drop it under your tongue and you hold it under your tongue for about 30, 45 seconds, close to a minute. Then you swallow, okay? It immediately takes effect. I mean, it happens instantly. It gets into your bloodstream within 5 to 10 minutes, okay? Let's see here. I see somebody asking something. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Good, who that, who that? Mm. Okay, just listening. And you're light on every, oh, and you're right on every point that you're making. Thank you, thank you. Um, so anyway, it, it goes up under the tongue, and what it does is it gets in the bloodstream, and it helps with erectile dysfunction, okay? Some men don't always need a cock ring. Sometimes they just need some other uh, types of supplements, because... We don't get a lot of the nutrition that we need from food all the time because a lot of times we don't eat well. That means that we don't have what we need in our body to be able to get that blood to circulate in the way it's supposed to circulate. So, of course, we have the Yohimbi drops and then we have the Yohimbi cream. Now, the cream is a topical ointment that we put directly on the shaft. The downside to the cream is you can't get no head if you got the cream on, okay? The next thing I have is Mr. Thick Dick. And the main ingredient in this is a natural um, ingredient called horny goat weed. Horny goat weed helps with erectile dysfunction. But horny goat weed is also in the kangaroo pill that the women are crazy about. Okay, that's one of the main ingredients. And in the pills, you do not have to worry about it elevating your blood pressure because horny goat weed actually lowers your blood pressure. Okay, so this is Mr. Thick Dick and this also helps with erectile dysfunction. Stud 100, we can't keep enough of this, okay? I have men that come in and get the Rhino Pill, which is a seven-day pill. No, you're not walking around with a hard dick for seven days. No, 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 no. You're not at work just getting erections out the blue. But when that puss in front of you, 
you're going to be ready. When it comes time to perform, you're going to be ready. So this is a seven-day pill. But what a lot of men like to do is take the Rhino and then they use the Stud 100, which is a delay spray that you put on that kind of numbs the shaft to make him be able to go a longer period of time. Now, my question to the men is how long are you trying to go? Okay? Because, see, some men have a way of trying to wear the pussy out, you know. And my thing is, if we're in a relationship, this pussy is here with you forever. Okay? You ain't got to abuse it. You ain't got to torture it. You can just take your time with it. Okay? Enjoy it. You ain't got to rush it. Because a lot of women come in and they tell me these men is rushing during sex. They just rushing trying to get that feeling. They not really taking our time to make sure that they're pleasing the body. Okay? Take your time. All right? Then we have the cock rings, which are, I think, one of the more simpler things that you can do to help with erectile dysfunction. This is the little small one. This one glows in the dark. This is a one-time use throw away. Then this is the bigger, thicker one, and this one should last you about a month. Okay? Moving on. Here we go. Prostate stimulator. Somebody just, they just logged off just then when I said the word prostate. They say Sharonda done lost her mind. First of all, before you start dealing with a man and his prostate, find out how he feel about you putting your fingers or putting gidgets and gadgets in his ass. Because if he like my husband, we have had the conversation. My husband is not comfortable with me going anywhere around his ass. And I respect that. If you have a man that is all right with you licking and probing and playing with his ass, then you know that about him already, and he may be open to you getting a prostate toy. All this prostate stimulator is going to do is to help you milk his prostate. People say, what do you mean, Sharonda, milk his prostate? A lot of times men have backed up cum inside of them, cum that they hadn't even released, and what this prostate stimulator does is it completely gets that nut sack empty, okay? You go put it in there, and it has these little, if you look at it, this is for your hands. This is for your fingers. And you take it and you probe in the inside of it and you rock it back and forth and he going to bust. And when he busts, it's going to be a whole, whole, whole lot of it. Uh, it's going to be a lot. It's, it's going to empty him out. Okay? So this is the prostate stimulator. Here we go. This is another stimulator. Okay? This one goes in the anal area. It's a little thicker then your prostate stimulator, okay? This is a prostate plug, kind of like how the women have the butt plugs. This is a prostate plug, okay? This is to give him more stimulation. Because you got a lot of men, when you get the plug and shit up in their ass, they did get real hard. And they will fuck you while they wearing this plug in their ass the whole time. They will fuck the shit out you, okay? Then we got, oh, this one here. Now, y'all know how the women have the thrusting vibrators, the ones that push in and out the pussy? This one is a thrusting uh, anal, well, anal prostate stimulator, but it thrusts in and out of his asshole, okay? That's the purpose of this. So if you got a man that is into anal play, baby, y'all got a lot of stuff that y'all can do. Like, oh, baby, it's a whole nother world when you get to talking about fucking with a man ass. They got some shit out there for that asshole. Oh, yeah. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is the essential kit, Okay? This comes with a vibrating cock ring. It comes with a prostate massager. It comes with a pocket pussy and a penis pump. Okay? So this has like a little bit of everything in it. A little bit of everything in it. So if you want to get a man like the ultimate gift, here you go. This is it. Oh, it also includes a DVD. Yeah. It includes a DVD telling you how all of these things work, how all of these things are beneficial, and the proper way to actually use the pump and the prostate um, prober and stuff like that. Okay? Let me show them. Make sure I got y'all on here. Let's see, let's see. Y'all not have y'all don't have much to say today when it comes down to this men's health. One thing about it, two things for sure. It's our job. A lot of times, men are not the ones that's going to get on the phone and call and schedule them an appointment. Most of the time, women are the ones that's more organized in a relationship. That's, those, that's just facts. We keep up with certain stuff. We keep up with bills. We keep up with appointments. We keep up with, you know, what everybody's supposed to be, what everybody's supposed to be doing. 
Ladies, if you love your husband, if you love your fiance, if you love your man, you're going to ask him for his insurance card and you're going to get on that phone and you're going to schedule him an appointment. You're going to make, you know, you're going to make sure that he has a primary care that takes his insurance. You're going to make sure that he's healthy, not only mentally, spiritually, but physically as well. Okay. You want a, a complete man. You want a full man, meaning that you want him well in all areas of his life, not just his money. Okay. Not just, you know, his looks outside you want to make sure he's well inside as well okay when you really love people you don't mind sitting down having a heart to heart and saying baby when was the last time you had a physical not when was the last time you went to the doctor because you might have just went to the doctor for a cold when was the last time you had a physical when was the last time that you had your heart checked that you had you know everything that, that you when was the last time you went to the doctor when was the last time you had blood work done when was the last time you had STD tests done? I'm a married woman. I have been married 20 years and I still get a full workup. I request STD. I request syphilis. I request uh, hepatitis. I request herpes. I request HIV AIDS. I request all of these things. You know why? Because we are human. And you put your faith in God, not man. And you have a responsibility to yourself to make sure that you are healthy, okay? One, because you want to be healthy for yourself, but two, most of us have children and stuff out here, and we need to know what's going on with us. We don't need to be ignorant when it comes down to our health. We need to ask the right questions, and we need to make sure that we are going to get tested and getting results for everything. I don't care how committed you are in your relationship. You need to know certain things for yourself. Stop being ignorant. Let's see. Why are you scared to go see the doctor? Let me just say this here. You, you it, if you go to your doctor and you feel intimidated by your doctor, that ain't the right doctor for you. I'm going to be honest with you. You're supposed to be able to go into your doctor's office and you're supposed to be able to go up in there and you're supposed to have be able to talk to them and feel comfortable about everything. They're supposed to be just that personable to you. It's no different than, you know, and I'm not saying that a doctor is not a good doctor, but sometimes some doctors talk over your head, meaning that they want to use all kind of terminology. Some of them just want to, you know, rush through the physical. I like doctors that are very detailed, that's going to take their time and that's going to explain things to me. Because if I'm going to go, that's just like any other type of customer service. If I'm going to go and I'm going to spend my money on something, I want to feel like my money was well spent. I pay insurance. I go to the doctor. When I go to the doctor, I want to feel like my money was well spent and I know exactly what's going on with me. So if you have a doctor, you should be able to go in there and you should be able to talk to them and ask whatever questions that you need to ask them. Because keep in mind, you are a paying consumer and if you are not going to see them, then that means they're losing money. So they that's when they're in the room with you, that's their time to answer whatever questions you have, whatever concerns you have. That's why we have, That's why we selected them to be our doctors. Ain't nobody no better than the other. It take all of us to make this world function, okay? So when you go into your doctors, I don't ever want you to be intimidated to ask them anything that you need to know. Mm -hmm. Even when you go to your pharmacist and they're doing the counseling with you, ask them whatever you need to ask them. That is their job. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Oh, let's see. I'm just making sure I'm answering everybody's questions. I think I answered everybody's questions. So, I think that's pretty much about it for today. I hope you all have some uh, useful information that you can um, share with others. I hope you all are pulling out your insurance cards, making sure that they are current because sometimes y'all have insurance cards and they be the mailed you a new one and you, you know, a lot of people don't keep up with that kind of stuff. So this is the time for you to check and make sure everything is all together. I work in Cancer Alley and I've lost some of my family members who have died to cancer. I just started receiving bad news is what I'm scared of. That's just me. I completely understand. I grew up in what is considered Cancer Alley. Cancer Alley is um, 
basically all of the residents, I, I like to say starting in Alson, which is where I grew up at, and all of the homes that go down Scenic Highway, through Banks, through Dixie, you know, all of those areas right there by the Exxon refinery and the uh, chemical plant. Um, and then it goes further all the way out there to Gonzales. Like, Cancer Alley is a long, long stretch. All, all the way, like, it's basically where all of the plants are, okay? Um, I always told my husband, my husband uh, by trade is, uh, he does commercial air conditioning. That's what he did for years. Very lucrative uh, profession. Made really good money doing commercial air conditioning, but the thing was, he would do the air conditioning inside the plants. He would have to go into the plants and service their air. I never liked my husband working in the plants. Never, never liked it. Because I understand that it's a very unhealthy environment. It kind of cringes my spirit when I hear young men, especially, you know, 19, 20 years old, the only thing they aspire to do is go work in the plant. Let me tell you something about people that's working in the plant. They have very low uh, life expectancy because a lot of times when they start working in those plants and they start working very young, 18, 19, 20 years old, by the time they retire from the plant, they spend their whole retirement going to the doctor because they've been around all of those messed up chemicals and all of that different stuff they've been inhaling their whole life, you know, working in the plant, trying to make that, so say, good money. But at the same time, the trade-off is your health. So it's unfortunate, and I know we got to have plant workers, and I know people get out there and do what they got to do. But um, sometimes I just look at things from a different perspective. I've done a lot of research when I was um, going to college, and we did a lot of stuff in political science about Cancer Alley and the, the people that lived around the area. That's why the housing is so cheap around those areas because they know they're killing you. They know that in certain areas they polluting. That's why every now and then they pay off a lawsuit because they didn't release some toxic stuff and a couple of thousand dollars they give these people don't compare to the way they ruin their life. People can't even uh, make a whole babies. They have miscarriages and all kind of stuff. So you know, you just got to be mindful of certain stuff. When we know better, we do better, you know. But don't ever be afraid. and Don't don't ever be afraid to um, to go and see about yourself and see about your health because sometimes it may, it may not be too late. You know, sometimes when we find out about it and we sit on the knowledge and we know it, then we want to start doing something about it. Sometimes we wait a little too long. So, you know, stay on top of these things. You don't ever have to be afraid of anything because one thing that I know, the God I serve is a healer. The God I serve, he he. the doctors can get one report, but he can turn that whole thing around. So I just pray, pray health all over you, um, sir, who's afraid to go to the doctor. I just pray for health. Health reports, good reports. That concludes Sex Talk with Sharonda. Um, yeah, who that and roll tide. <laughs>